everybody. And Ruthie, thank you. Ruthie, thank you so much for allowing me to share some of my knowledge that I so much want to impart with people in our community. Um, sometimes I spill my beans into a YouTube video and put them up when something really pertinent comes up with hell. And there's a few things that, just as a first approximation, as our, maybe if we get to do this more often, I don't know, but to share with you a few things that are so important and so crucial for all of us. And we talked last time a little bit about bone density. And so we know that now there's a difference between people that their body tends to be more acidic versus creating a diet that is rich in alkalinity. So then we go, well, what does that even mean, right? So we go, okay, we know that alkalinity comes in the form of root vegetables. We know that it comes in the form because they're high in minerals. We know that it comes in kale. We know that a high acid loading diet comes from beef and it comes from simple carbohydrates. It comes from all that white processed flour and white processed sugar. Okay, we know that, but still, why do some people who live their lives so healthy and they're, they're eating vegetarian, and a healthy vegetarian, not like what people would eat in the past with Velveeta cheese on it or something, but, or they're living vegan, and yet they're still having problems. So in my research and my quest for pulling in even fuller information, because I think some of us explore routes of going into being a vegetarian or, or practicing veganism or practicing even some people going into raw foods. I have a lot to say about that. I think, you know, the importance is, is we need to sprout our grain but, and we need to get phytates out. So there's some really great science that is luscious behind that. If you're going to be a vegetarian, if you're going to be vegan, is that when you take your nuts, when you take almonds, just like in the old days, they soaked it in water overnight. And that actually washes off the phytates. And it allows the nut, it allows the seed, it allows the grain to just sprout. And in that just sprouting, the grain or the seed or the nut knows that if it keeps those phytates around it, if it keeps those around it, it can keep it protected and it can last for a very long time until the conditions come just right, which may be soaking in the ground, and it washes off the phytates and allows it to sprout. In that sprouting, it makes it bioavailable. So now you're going to have a group of people that are still sprouting their nuts, and they're sprouting it, and it's anti-inflammatory, but they're still having some problems, right? We know people that are doing everything, but they're still having. So let's look at that. We're going to look at a couple of things that are very easy blood tests that you can do that's actually a genetic factor. And that is a big, big, big one. They never thought it was a big deal. Then I started looking into it, and I started recognizing it's a huge deal, and it's well more than 50% of us in this country carry this gene. And it's called the MTHFR gene, and it stands, and I'll write it out, but it'll also be on the flip video, so you'll have it. It stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. What does that mean? It means that your liver, God bless our liver, right? It's so <laughs> huge. It's this big. It's like, it's aside from the skin, it's one of our oh. largest organs, and it does a lot of work. It does two stages of detoxification. One is it draws the toxins in from the body, from pesticides, from your own cells making byproduct for all of that. Our cells make a beautiful byproduct called garbage. And you've got to get it out, right? So, you know, our cells poop and pee, so to speak. We need to get that out. Even that, if you lived a perfect life, goes through stage one of the detoxification of the liver. If you're someone like me, or my sons, or my mother, or more than 
of our population that has this gene, you don't have the methyl. And the methyl is like the garbage man that attaches on to the toxin. This is called stage two detoxification. It attaches on to it and it draws it out. And it draws it out in one of two ways or two of two ways. One is into your intestines and you poop it out, which is why it's important to poop. Number two is, or number one, is it goes through the kidneys. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> you can pee it out, which is why it's important to drink water. Don't just go around in life doing things because people tell you to do it. If you know what's going on, and that's what I want to share with you, if you know what's going on, then you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which is, to me, the greatest gift, because I don't like to follow around blindly. I like to understand it, and then I create the answers in myself, and my body gets it even better. So here's what happens. The new genre of people are going, they're running to the health food store, or they're going to their nutritionist, or they're going to their doctor, I'm detoxifying, I'm detoxifying. And then, within three years, they start to get sick. They start getting fibromyalgia. Things like Parkinson's. I mean all kinds of diseases that get confused in the head. They wander and they get aches and pains in the body. All kind. Why? Highly likely they have the MTHFR gene and they're detoxifying because they're taking all those herbs that are trying to push it out from the liver. But if the liver doesn't have the methyl ion, the garbage man to attach to it to draw it out, the liver goes, man, there's so much going through, there's so much going through, I've got to get it out, right? Because that's the body. So it's going to spill it out into your bloodstream. And your bloodstream is going to take it to your muscles. And your muscles, get, those muscles can get achy in those people, kind of called fibromyalgia. Okay? It can also other diseases. It takes it up through the blood brain barrier. And all that stuff that was supposed to go into your intestines and in through your renal area to be pooped and peed out didn't. It got taken up there. So what do we see? People that get confusion, early said dementia, all kinds of things with the nervous system, Parkinson's again, some MS, depends on the different versions, and a whole host of a lot of illnesses. Wow. So I have made it my, not to mention neuropathy. Mm -hmm. Hugely so neuropathy wow. because we need to have those B vitamins. We need to have the B12 to have the nerves be alive down our legs, into our feet, and into our hands. And what is such a big thing that you hear people say, I don't feel my legs. I don't feel my feet. I try to get up, I can't feel my feet, and then the people grip like this. So here we, in Walk for Life, here we, in Bones for Life, are teaching all of this, but with the bones and working and understanding the movement, but if we can help also our clients and say, go to your doctor and run this test. Go to your doctor and run this test. So you're not diagnosing them. You're helping them find this out. Now. What have I found out with this MTHFR gene? What are some other things that go on through the liver when the liver doesn't work well? Hepatitis. And? Oh, sort of High blood pressure. Cholesterol issues. And cholesterol issues. So what do we have? We have an aging population. Because they haven't been methylating, it starts to add up. And those nerves are getting, they're dying off in the legs, and nothing is getting through. And what happens? The liver produces too much cholesterol. And I'm talking about a person who has lived a healthy lifestyle. And they have, are you ready for this? Genetically high cholesterol. And of course, for years, I would ask the doctors, what does that mean to you? Genetically high cholesterol. What does that mean to you? Because I want to understand what you think genetically high cholesterol means. And I went, oh my God, I got it. Genetically, they have the MTHFR gene. 
So the liver isn't methylating out, the, and so the liver can't do what it's supposed to do. One of the things is it detoxifies. The other thing is it makes beautiful cholesterol so we can work well. Our body needs the cholesterol. But if it can't get the cholesterol out, suddenly we're having a dysfunction or a misfiring in how much cholesterol we're having. Now, how do I know? I experiment on the people I love the most, <laughs> one of them being my mother. My mother, I was raised on the Adela Davis, you know, kind yeah. of living, very healthy. She would steam green vegetables in the green water at the bottom. She would squeeze the lemon in it, and she'd say, Lechaim, this is to life. This is what my mother would do. Her mother was a doctor and a homeopath, and we, she, we would all drink the, the steamed green water with the lemon. It cleanses the liver. My mother ended up with high cholesterol out the wazoo. Not to mention high blood pressure out the wazoo for, they can't find out why. And neuropathy in the legs, because they can't figure out why. So I went to the doctor and I said, I have a suggestion. Can we look and see, and this is just a Kaiser doctor, by the way, okay? So this is any system in the medical system. We ran the test. I was in a seminar, I was in a seminar in Washington, D.C. My mother's doctor calls me on the phone in Washington, D.C. and says, Oh my God, oh my God, this is brilliant, this is brilliant. I have good news and I have bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? And I go, the good news. And he goes, you're right, your mother has the MTHFR gene. That means she doesn't methylate, she doesn't take the garbage out of her liver. So he says, you want the bad news? And I go, sure. He goes, she has the MTHFR gene. <laughs> it's a problem. And he goes, now what do we do? And I go, that's a good question. Give me about a year and I will have it figured out. Wow. Okay. It took me a year. I contacted the best top-notch research scientist in nutrition in the country. And it's two things. So simple. It's B12. But hold on before you write that down. There's two types of B12. There's cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin, C-Y-A-N-O, cobalamin, that one comes sublingual and it also comes as the shot. Mm. Which one? The cyanocobalamin. Mm. So, I love my mother. That meant I experimented on her. My mother says, when I lived in Israel, I always got the shot and they give you B12 and B complex. I always felt so good. So I go, okay, she was young. Mm. Give her the shot. Not going to work. But give her the shot. So we went. Two months getting her the shot. We came back. They did the blood test. They go, oh, your mom. She didn't improve, by the way. And she said, and the doctor says, oh, my God, her B12 and her blood serum is so high. It's out of control. We have to stop the B12. And I go, that's because it's cyano cobalamin. She doesn't methylate. It's floating all around in the bloodstream doing nothing and it can't go anywhere. It's stuck in a loop. Wow. I went to the health food, the health food store, I think for $12, I bought methyl cobalamin. It's methylated. The garbage man's right there. Goes in, gave her 5,000 micrograms. You can give up to 12,000, but just, you, I take 1,000 and 2,000. So, a, you know, and a thousand is fine. You have to find out. It's a very simple, inexpensive, your insurance will cover it. Um, methylating the MTHFR uh, blood test, because it's a very simple blood test. Now, I will tell you, my mother's doctor said, oh, my God, I'm testing all my patients, including my mother. Because he too loves his mother. <laughs> <laughs> and his mother had undiagnosably high cholesterol, undiagnosably high blood pressure, and included um, numbness in the feet. And so now he's been helping her. And I said, do you know how much money we have just saved the Kaiser system? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kaiser loves this. Kaiser loves this, then they, they envelop this. So it's understanding that. Now, there's one other thing that you need aside from methyl cobalamin.